Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on constructing a synthetic microstructure using Dream 3D. Today we're going to be generating a synthetic polycrystal microstructure consisting of a single phase and a target drain size of 100 microns. We're going to accomplish this by using Dream 3D's stats generator and synthetic generation filters. Open Dream 3D and select the stats generator from the filter list. This presents the user interface that will be used to input all the parameters that go into generating the needed statistics. When the filter is initially inserted into the pipeline, a default primary phase is created for the user. The default average feature equivalent sphere diameter is set to 2.7 length units. The user interface has been updated with an additional input field to allow the user to directly enter the average feature ESD. For this example, we're going to enter 100 into the input field and press the enter key. Notice how the rest of the input fields automatically updated based on the entry. Let's enter a few other values to see how the values will change. Let's try 5, and then 50, 200, and then back to 100. For now, we're going to leave the sigma value set at 0 0.1. Now that we have changed the default ESD, we need to correct the number of bins that are going to be used. We have found that just 7 to 10 bins is sufficient to get good results. We want to adjust the number of bins to a lower value, so we adjust the bin step size to a slightly larger value. Let's try a bin step size of 12.5. There, that looks much better. Another option that we have to tailor our synthetic structure is to not allow grains larger than or smaller than a certain size. This can be accomplished by setting the min cutoff and max cutoff values. The default value for sigma is 5. For example, if we want to disallow any really large grains, then we can set the max cutoff to 3, which will shift the plot to the right. Let's leave that value at 3, and we'll leave the minimum cutoff to 5, which will allow some smaller grains to be generated. There are several morphological presets that the user can select. For now, we're going to stick with the primary equiax preset. Once we have our initial target value set, we can click the Create Data button to allow Stats Generator to generate the initial distributions that are used during the synthetic generation process. A number of distributions were just calculated, so let's take a second to take a look at them. The Omega-3 plots show the distributions that will be used to generate the basic shapes of the grains. There are several reference papers that are good reads to fully understand how this variable works. The B over A and C over A axis ratios are another set of morphological parameters that describe the relationship between the A, B, and C axis of an ellipsoid. The Neighbor Distributions tab shows the distributions that will be used to calculate the number of neighbors that a grain has. The default values for each distribution are known to generate a reasonable microstructure and therefore we're not going to adjust any of those values today. If you want to manually adjust any of the distributions, you can right click anywhere on the plot and select Edit Data. This will present you with a small spreadsheet style input where you can adjust your values. Note that once you do this, you cannot go back and adjust anything on the feature size distribution area. Moving on to the crystallographic statistics, the first area is the ODF tab. Clicking on this tab will show you an area to enter specific texture values and the resulting pole figure. The initial poll figure shows a random distribution of orientations as evidenced by the scale only having a max value of around 1.8 to 2. We would like to add a texture to the synthetic microstructure using a brass template. To do this, we click on the Add ODF Weight button to bring up the dialog box where we will enter our values. We double click on the brass selection from the list. This will give us an initial angle set of 35450. Note the initial weight of 500,000 and a sigma of 2. The weight factor tells the algorithm how strongly to pick values from that angular bin and the sigma value tells the algorithm how quickly to taper off the distribution. Let's leave the default values and see what the pull figure looks like. As you can see, we have created a fairly strong texture. If we wanted to smooth out the texture a bit, we could change the value of sigma from 2 to 4 by directly editing the ODF parameter table. Note, after we change the value, how the area of the texture spreads out. Let's change sigma back to 3 and set the weight to 50 to give some texture to the final microstructure. 
Another option the user has to tailor the crystallographic properties of the synthetic microstructure is to adjust the misorientation distribution function, or MDF. The user can click on the MDF radio button to display the MDF properties. Editing these properties works in the same way as the ODF parameters. Click the Add MDF Weight button to add an entry into the table. Adjust the angle in degrees, the axis, and add a weight value. Note how the plot will update itself as you enter the values. To remove a row, select the row and click the Delete MDF Weight button. The last option is the Axis ODF, which controls the morphological orientation of the grains. Since we are creating an Equiax polycrystal, this set of parameters will not have much effect on the final structure. Where the Axis ODF comes into play is if we are generating a rolled microstructure or a composite structure that has long fibers or other elongated features. The Axis ODF would control how those features are oriented in space. Now that we have all of our input parameters set up, we can finish building up the pipeline. First we need to insert the Initialize Synthetic Volume filter. We're going to create a volume of 500 by 256 by 125 voxels in a slab structure with a resolution of 2 microns per voxel. This should generate about 225 grains in the final structure. Next, we add the Establish Shape Types filter and select Ellipsoids as the general shapes for our grains. After that, we'll add the Pack Primary Phases filter. We're going to just accept all the default values. The next filter to add is the Find Feature Neighbors filter. With this filter, we have some selections to make. We should select the Store Surface Features array and select the proper Feature IDs and Cell Feature Attribute Matrix values. The next filter is the Match Crystallography filter. We set the maximum number of iterations to 100,000 and accept all the other default values. The next filter to add is the Generate IPF Colors. The next filter to add is the Generate IPF Colors, which will use the standard inverse pole figure color scheme for a cubic material. Set a reference direction of 0, 0, 1, and then select the Euler angles, phases, and crystal structure attribute arrays. Lastly, we insert the Write Dream 3D data file into the pipeline and set an output file. When all is ready, we execute the pipeline. And after the pipeline is complete, we can open the resulting XDMF file in Paraview. After the pipeline is done executing, locate the file in the file system and open the XDMF file using Paraview to visualize the microstructure. From within Paraview, be sure to view by the IPF colors and tell Bearview not to generate a color table, but to use the colors that were generated by Dream3D. As you can see, there's a light texture to the structure. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on generating a synthetic microstructure using Dream3D.